Another thing you can utilize in the Revit structure modeling system is the ability to do material takeoffs. That allows you to calculate areas of concrete, lengths of steelwork, and so on. Basically, because of this, what I've done, I've created a sheet for you MTO, Material Takeoff 001. So there's our material takeoff schedule. Again, in the project browser, you scroll up to the schedules and quantities, right click, new material takeoff. Now we're going to go for floors in this case, and our filter list is obviously going to be structure because we're working in Revit structure. Phase will be new construction. All of this is new construction at the moment, but obviously you can break it down into your construction phases if you need to. I'll click on OK. What we've got to do now is obviously select the takeoff properties that we need. One of them that is important, obviously, area. We'll add that first. Now we need to make sure that we've got a lot of information here. We'll also go for cost, count, we'll add that too. As we scroll down, there's a lot of information. We'll go for manufacturer, we'll add that, and we want material area. So we'll add that as well, because it is a material takeoff. So let's have a look if we've got everything there. Let's have a look, have we got name or anything like that in there? No, we haven't, but you've got type. So we'll go for type. And then what we'll do, we'll scroll up here again, and we'll just check that we've got assembly name as well. We'll add that too. And you can add all of this information. You can add as much as you like. Level is also important because we're going to work with a particular level in this case. Now I can move all of these up and down. So what we'll do is we'll go level, we'll take up to the top because that is our base filter that we're going to use. Then we've got area, cost, count, manufacturer, material area. Obviously we need that. So what we'll do, we'll move that one up as well, and we'll put that before the other area there. That'll do for now, because we've got one material, it will be a material takeoff. You have to have at least one material field to make sure it's a material takeoff. So if I click on OK now, one minute though, do I just go ahead and click on OK? No, I don't. I have to filter, remember? So we're going to filter by level, and we'll make sure that we're using the first floor in this case. And then sorting and grouping, we'll sort by our assembly name, manufacturer. Let's go for material area. Formatting, we can set it horizontal, a line to the left. And appearance, we've got lines, title text, header text, and so on. I'm going to leave all of those at a default for now. So I click on OK, and there is our floor material takeoff. Now, the manufacturer hasn't actually been listed in the properties palette when they've been placed. But if I just scroll across here, it's the chorus flooring one, remember, that we placed. So it's the chorus com floor. So I can edit this if I want to. That's the lovely thing about material takeoff, but we'll look at that in the next video. So I've got my floor material takeoff here. Now we need to rename that. So we'll rename it and it'll be floor material takeoff, but it'll be for level one. So we'll put the numbering the same as our floors, so we'll go for 001 dash first floor, and then another dash like that, so it's a floor material takeoff. You could, if you wanted to, obviously just take that and change it to MTO. MTO is the standard abbreviation for material takeoff, so we'll tidy that up like that, and then our naming philosophy sticks with our floors like that, so I'll OK that now. It's a lot easier to understand then as well. 001, we know it's first floor, and it's a floor material takeoff. Now, if I come back down here to my sheets, there's my MTO001 there. That's my material takeoff schedules. And then I scroll up to my 001 floor MTO and release the mouse button. I can place that on my scheduling like that, and I hit escape. Now, the lovely thing about this is I can go and edit that information, and it will edit on the sheet. So if I go back into the MTO there and click in here, I can obviously change the settings. So if I change that to Chorus, which is the manufacturer, like so, that'll update there. And then here, it'll apply to that, so I'll OK it. That applies to all of the project. So every single piece of concrete with Chorus Confloor is now a manufacturer Chorus. That's updated there. Go down to my sheet, just check that and have a look in there, it's updated in there. But more importantly, if I now go back to my first floor structural plan and go and look at one of my slabs, there's one there, that's a chorus com floor there. If I click there, 
I've clicked on the structural framing tag instead. So let's just zoom in a bit here so that we can actually see what we're doing. If I go there like that, my slab is there. Can you just see the edge of it? There's my chorus com floor there. So when I click on that and look in here, what will happen is that will have updated in here as well. Now you won't actually see it listed as such, but if I edit the type here, like so, it will have updated in here. So if I look there, there you go, manufacturer chorus. So I've updated all of those in my project via my material takeoff. You can also do that with scheduling as well. I'll just cancel that now. Obviously deselect the slab, zoom extents. But that's how these things work. And that's just the best thing about Revit is you can do a material takeoff like that and you can edit even from the sheet if you want to. There's nothing to stop you selecting that and editing it in there if you want to. So I'll just hit escape there. But the best way obviously to go to your material takeoff, which is just up here. Let's go find it in the browser. There's the sheet. And then I need to find my material takeoff there. I can edit that information at any time. So that's how your material takeoffs work in Revit Structure.